Hey folks, made this video for a friend, but I thought I'd post it here in case it's useful for anyone else as well. So today we're going to talk about how to get Mixamo characters and animations into Unreal as easily as possible. So let's look at our friend here, Douglas. So if you go into Mixamo.com and you pick a character, so just click the Characters tab, pick a character, then go to the Animations tab and pick an animation. I've already selected the Run for Douglas here, so if you need to find a particular animation just typed in run and then you just click and then it adds to that character if you want to have this crazy run here then you just click on that and now he has this crazy run here so one thing about actions such as running that you really need to consider is before you export is whether you want this to be an in place or not in place animation in this case I want to control the translation through Unreal and not what's coming out of here. Because what you don't see is that his transform information, when you import him, it'll still stay back here. So he'll run away from it, but your 000 is still gonna stay there. So your actual pivot point, for example, will stay back here. It's not gonna go with him. So in this case, I wanna go ahead and say, I want this to be an in-place animation so he stays on his pivot, and I'll modify that when it gets to Unreal. Now, what you can do, a couple different things. We'll, mm -hmm, we'll go the quicker way, though I'll show you both ways. So I'm gonna hit Download. There's a bunch of knobs and dials. You can adjust what he's doing if you want, but I'm going to take it as is. So you can hit download. And the first time you download a character, you're going to want to make sure it's with skin. And that also comes with the materials, the textures, and such, because we want all of that in Unreal. And you can leave the rest as is. So hit download. And it's going to download. While that is downloading, you see it downloading here. And we're going to pull it from here into Unreal, but let me move over here for a second over here in unreal this is just your standard third person example map I'm gonna make a new folder at the top level here new folder and I'm gonna call it mixmo right because these are where all my mixmos are incoming and I might have multiple characters so I'm gonna create another folder call it Douglas all right, so go inside there and all you have to do to bring the running Douglas in is here's your download or find it in your file browser actually you could just drag and drop it in here but because this is the first time I'm bringing him in I want the name to be something better than running right so I'm going to show it in the folder I'm editing the name off screen I'm gonna call it Douglas running All right so it's updating and now I'm dragging that you can't see it but I dragged it from my file browser into this window here just the FBX file, the renamed, and that you can see it's going in and making an asset, Douglas running. You don't want to assign it to a skeleton because in this first instance, instance, it's bringing in its own skeleton with it, which is fine. If I hit reset to default, you'll see by default that this box is not checked. So in this case, you don't have to do it this way if you bring him in the first time, but I'm, I want Douglas as a skeleton, skeletal mesh and the skeleton to come in with its animation as well. You could do it without, but I'm gonna go ahead and do two for one. I'm gonna get the skeletal mesh and the animation in this first shot, so I'm gonna check that box and import. All right, so Douglas is coming into his folder here, and we're gonna verify it by double-clicking. When all the assets come in, you're gonna see materials, you're gonna see textures, so here's some materials, here's some textures and such. Here's Douglas, it says Douglas running, although in this case Douglas isn't running, right? This is just the skeletal mesh. This is the animation that goes with that skeletal mesh and it's called running. I'm gonna double click this one and it's gonna load it to show us. It's still, as you can see down here, compiling shaders, bringing it in. One thing we notice already, he is running in Unreal, but see his eyes are looking a little kind of funny. And if I look through him this way, He's really looking funny. Come here, Douglas. So what's happening is, uh, yeah, you can see his eyes through the back of his head. When you import characters from Mixamo, I'm gonna go to this mesh tab here. So this is building and complexity, right? The rest of his texture's coming in. So this is the skeleton tab, this is the mesh tab, this is the animation tab, and actually this last one is showing you any physics you might do, which we're not gonna talk about. Let's just go to this mesh tab here where it shows what materials are being used on the character. So what's happening is by somehow the default here, if I double click this to modify the material, it shows that this material uh, thinks it's 
translucent. So we want to switch that to opaque. And I'll go ahead and make it double sided while I'm here in case there's a benefit for that. You know, like if you had a feather coming out of a hat or something that one of the characters has, uh, then you'd be able to see the feather from both sides. All right, so that takes care of one. Let's see, uh, we're looking at this here. All right, so that's the first one. Got to double click. Each of these are like that. So you're going to have to go to each one, set it to opaque. If you want, you can slide forward in the video just a little bit, but don't go too far because this won't take me that much longer. So there's two. And so any material likely that's translucent and not supposed to be translucent, you want to go ahead and make this quick fix. Two-sided save. And this gives you a little practice with the material editor as well. And one more. Then we'll be done fixing his materials. Can't have his pants be see-through. All right, so assuming he's going to be fine. Let's look at the animation, which is this first tab here. All right, so now he's running and his textures and materials are working fine. So we're good with that. And so that is the first thing we imported and it brought in all the materials and textures and such. So let's now bring in an additional um, animation. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and put him in the scene, get a shot running and get him ready, uh, give him some action. So just put into the scene the skeletal mesh not the animation. We'll add the animation when we get to the sequencer work. So I'm going to go to the content folder and make a, another folder, cinematics. And in the cinematics folder, I'm going to make a new level sequence. We'll call it shot 01 or 2, whatever my finger hit. And let's see, we need him in the scene, right? So we're going to add Douglas running even though he's not running we're gonna add him anyway probably naming convention wise should have done this a little bit cleaner brought him in without any animation to make like the master character and then import all the animations against that but that's fine so now and let's see starting at frame zero we're gonna add an animation of douglas running all right so then there he goes and he's running in place because that's what we chose to have him do right he's running in place so back to the first frame, Oop, first frame, I'm going to key his position, going to cruise down here. Uh, earlier I was working with setting things to linear, so it's already set to linear. And let's see, I've got to move him a little ways because he's running, right? And set a key, I'm going to turn on auto key while I'm at it. Set a key there and see how that looks, see if it looks. Oh, uh, he's not running very much, is he? Did I hit the wrong button? There we go. Okay, he's fine, whatever. All right, so from there to there, he's running. Now let's say we need him to do some other animation that we wanna blend into. What could he do? He could do a run to a stop. So let's do run, stop, and there is a run to stop. We'll see how this one works. So he just kind of stops on his left foot there. Uh, we'll say all this is fine. We'll download. Now this time, because we already downloaded him once, his skeleton exists and all the textures and everything. So uh, let's do it without skin. It's just the animation data this way. A lot lighter. Download it. Okay. Now comes the, you know, workflow. How do you want to, you know, what kind of mess do you want to make out of your scene? I'm going to go back to the content browser, go back into Douglas's folder. Maybe if you want to pay attention where everything is, you can make another folder called Douglas Animations. I'm going to just drag it into here because it'll work whatever we do. So I'm going to just drag it in with the rest of the Douglas stuff. And this time, you'll notice the interface changes a little bit. We only have animation data now because we unchecked any kind of uh, skeletal mesh to go with it. So it's asking, do you want to apply this animation to this existing skeleton? And we do, because that's our already imported Douglas skeleton. So we'll leave everything as is and import. All right, so now I'm gonna double click just to see what it looks like in the animation. 
little window here and he's doing what I would expect him to do. All right, so we're good there. I'm gonna hit the save all button just because I have a bunch of asterisks and I do know I wanna save all these things. Yes, I wanna save all those things. So it's gonna save real quick. And then once it saves, I'm gonna go back to the sequencer tab. I'm gonna add that new animation after he stops running. So I'm gonna hit plus animation. Now there's two things to choose from. Every time you bring in a new animation, it's gonna show as an option here. So I'm going to turn that on and he's running and then he slides to a stop. So you see there's a little bit of a pop there. No, it's actually not. What leg is that same leg? Can't really tell. That's his left leg. What's he doing here? Left leg goes out. Oh, and then does another. Okay, so there's a little bit of an overlap there. So either, you know, this is up to your aesthetic. You can make his foot stretch a little bit. You can have him go a little bit farther. So he's, you know, whatever. This is up to your aesthetic work. You know, the main goal being if you run them into each other, right, then you can, um, ooh, what a nice long sliding stop. That's actually not horrible. Oh, no, that's horrible. Anyway, you know how to do this because we've done it in another video. You can overlap and right there, you see how you got the little crisscross there. If you want, you can right click, go to properties and change the, oh, not properties, where is it? Uh, options no yeah options and then you can change you want it to be a linear blend instead or you got all these different curve types maybe you can cheat it that way or just offset your frames and position a little wet bit whatever gets the aesthetics you want that's how you can blend together multiple uh, mixmo animations to get what you need so again pick a character pick an animation and download it first time you download a character uh, accept the uh, skeleton to come with it have it make its own skeleton after that you cannot need the skin the uh, again the first time you need the skin so you get the skeleton and materials and shaders and all that after that you can just do the straight animation data download it import it and then you'll be ready to roll if you have any questions let me know